A Broken Man in the Dawn by N underscore Nami, read by Erin O'Riordan, with the kind permission of the author. Rating explicit. The creator chose not to use archive warnings. Fandoms, Supernatural RPF, CW RPS. Relationships, Jensen Ackles slash Misha Collins, and Jensen Ackles slash Tom Welling. Characters, Jensen Ackles, Misha Collins, Jared Padalecki, Mackenzie Ackles, and Tom Wellings. Additional tags, Kidvik, Daddy Jensen, Minor Character Death, Depression, Angst, Heart Comfort, and Romance. Originally published September 24, 2013. This work has eight chapters. Today I'll be reading chapter one. Although the fic is explicit, there is no explicit content in chapter one. Summary. After his brother dies in a car accident, Jensen is left to take care of his newborn nephew, and he's in over his head. Also, he has the feeling that the guy who just moved into the apartment next door hates him because of the crying baby that keeps him up all night. As it turns out, Misha not only has that set of mesmerizing blue eyes, but also a lot of intuition when it comes to fussing cranky babies. Author's Notes So I wanted to write a slow burn angsty cockles kid fic and this is the result. It's immensely fun to do this outside of a challenge for once, and I promise regular updates on this. Expect them every other week. The master post for this story is cross-posted on my lab journal. Special thanks to the lovely Wynn Jenster, who volunteered to beta this story. This wouldn't be possible without you. To the awesome petite madame, who drew the amazing banner for me, Excuse me, it says this amazing banner for me, even though she's got enough to worry about without me begging for artwork outside of challenges. To the Tumblr-based Cockles Shipping Circle, consisting of these lovely ladies, Cass would rather be here, Super Misha Miga, and Amel Angel. Thank you all so much for your consistent support. Heart. Chapter 1. Rated 18 plus on Live Journal. Again, that is for the fic as a whole, there is no explicit content in chapter one. It took exactly one phone call for Jensen Ackles to have his life turned upside down. One phone call, one drive to the local hospital during which he almost ran three red lights and skidded to an abrupt halt on the icy road twice until he finally wrapped his sister in his arms. She seemed so calm and collected eyes expressionless and blank as she clutched her cell phone to her chest. However, as soon as she rested her chin on Jensen's shoulder, she broke down into tears. Jensen was still caught in the daze that had followed him all the way to the hospital and tugged his sister in, quietly soothing her by stroking his hand through her long but now disheveled hair. Why is this happening? she sobbed. The wetness of her tears making Jensen's shirt cling to his already sweaty skin. This isn't fair. This isn't... Jay! Shh! Jensen hushed. He couldn't cry. In that moment, he had to be strong for his little sister. He couldn't allow himself to break down, too. She needed him. She needed her big brother, because he was the only one she still had. Josh laid in the room behind them, the doctors storming in and out of it, every one of them looking down at the floor or at their clipboard and avoiding Jensen's or Mackenzie's questioning gazes. A drunk driver, they said, who lost control over his pickup truck on the highway and hit Josh's car, driving them off the road and into a tree. The car was totaled, but worse still, Josh and his wife were gravely injured. Mom and Dad... And now Josh? It's not fair, Mackenzie repeated, choking on her tears and coughing. Mac, I'm here, Jensen said quietly. We're gonna, we've still got each other. Someone cleared their throat beside them, 
and Jensen looked up to find a middle-aged doctor with salt and pepper hair watching them with a worried frown. Miss Ackles, Mr. Ackles? Yes. Any news? Jensen burst out. Yes, it's, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but we couldn't do anything else for him. Jensen stared at him, unable to form a single thought, and bit down on his lip to stop it from trembling. In his arms, Mac twisted and buried her face in his neck as a new wave of sobs shook her body. What about Marianne? Jensen asked flatly. He was afraid that if he gave in to the pain that was making his chest tighten and his heart clench impossibly, he wouldn't be able to hold himself together anymore. Her internal organs were too damaged. She didn't survive the surgery, the doctor answered in a quiet tone, obviously affected by the devastating news, too. I'm sorry for your loss, he added. Leaning down, Jensen held on tight to his little sister, buried his nose in her blonde hair, needing to feel that she was still there, still alive. The doctor, Henry Thompson, M.D., the sign on his coat said, shuffled his feet. The baby is alive and healthy, though. Jensen nodded and took a deep breath. His analytically trained brain kicked it to high gear, numbing the searing feeling scorching his insides setting priorities that he wasn't consciously aware of, but he knew with surprising clarity that he needed to take care of the people he still had in his life first. That meant Mackenzie, and that meant the baby. Mary Ann's and Josh's baby, whose due date would have been a mere three weeks away. Do you want to see it? Of course, Jensen answered automatically, irritated. I just thought if you wanted to put it up for adoption, you might not want to get attached, Dr. Thompson advised cautiously. However, that made Jensen perk up. We're not putting it up for adoption, he decided, his voice as firm as he could manage. The poor baby had no fault in this, and as long as there was family to take care of it, he would not sign anything that left the child to the foster care system. J. His sister untangled herself from his arms to take a step back. What are we going to do? You've got a job. I've got college. Yes, but I... Jensen broke off, let the sentence remain unfinished for a second. He thought of his job as an engineer, which he'd been working in for five years now, and left it at, I'll deal with it. There's people in worse situations than mine who take care of a child. You sure? It's Josh's kid. Of course I'm sure. Jensen stated, and there was not a doubt in his mind at that moment. So, please follow me then. The doctor interrupted them and led the way when both Jensen and Mackenzie nodded. Not five minutes later, and two floors higher, Jensen was handled, handed a small white bundle with a reddened, squishy, and very sleepy face peeking out. The baby seemed so fragile, so delicate. Its tiny hands clenched into fists that barely fit around Jensen's thumb when he took the baby's hand in his. Boy or girl, Jensen asked the nurse. Boy, she answered with a soft smile at the newborn in Jensen's arms. Mackenzie looked over Jensen's shoulders, her eyes still red-rimmed and glassy, but inevitably lining up at seeing the little boy. Hey there, little one, she said softly, stroking his cheek with her index finger. The touch made him blink and yawn adorably, and Jensen knew that he had not just lost his heart then and there. The touch made him blink and yawn adorably, and Jensen knew that he had just lost his heart then and there. There was no way that he would not raise this kid. Josh and Marianne didn't have a boy name, did they? He asked absentmindedly without averting his gaze. No, Molly or Andrea, they said. Guess that makes him an Andrew, then. Andrew Joshua, how about that? Jensen mumbled, lost in thought. The question directed more at himself than to anyone in the room. Andy, AJ, AJ Ackles, Mackenzie summed it up. I like it. Welcome to the world, AJ, Jensen greeted the little boy, still too hesitant to cuddle him firmly to his chest, no matter how much he wanted to. This was his brother's legacy, the boy was all they had left of him, and Jensen would damn well take care of him. The 
following week flew by in what seemed like a second. Kenzie managed to get that week off from college, and Jensen took three days off after negotiating with his boss to get his paternity leave. Within those few days, Jensen had to repeat the painful story of how he suddenly was the guardian of a newborn baby several times, and by the third time, he could sum it up, emotionless, within two sentences. Some people eyed him with pity and sympathy in their eyes, some with irritation at his bluntness about the manner. Some people eyed him with pity and sympathy in their eyes, some with irritation at his bluntness about the matter. But the truth was, Jensen felt hollow and empty, and there were a thousand things to take care of at the moment. He needed his head in the game, and Mackenzie could only do so much, although she tried. To be assigned as the boy's guardian was a mere act of minutes in front of the family court, since Marianne had no close family as a single child, with both parents having died years ago. Jensen, having a home and a steady job, didn't even need to convince the judge of his ability to care for a child. To be assigned as the boy's guardian was a mere act of minutes in front of the family court since Marianne had no closer family as a single child with both parents having died years ago. Jensen, having a home and a steady job, didn't even need to convince the judge of his ability to care for a child. Since AJ had been born under severely different circumstances than usual and around three weeks too soon, the hospital kept him for observation purposes for another week. Jensen stopped by the hospital whenever he could, at least once a day, to see the baby boy who was mostly asleep during his visits. Luckily, he was doing fine. No after effects of the surgery or the accident affecting his development. The hardest part by far was going over to his brother's house. When Jensen opened the door, he more than once expected to see Josh rounding the corner from the kitchen, eyeing him with surprise and then insulting him for not using the doorbell like a normal visitor would. But Josh never came, and the house stayed eerily quiet, Jensen's footfalls the only sound following him down the hallway. The living room especially seemed even quieter than the rest of the house. Not too long ago, it was the one room where there was always noise, from the people living there, from the TV, from the dog that Jensen had to give to one of Josh's neighbors with a heavy heart because pets weren't allowed in his condo building. Now, dust began to settle on the surfaces around without Mary Ann cleaning them up and the room felt cold. Not because Jensen hadn't turned up the heating, for whom, but because it felt empty. There would be no poker nights in here anymore. There wouldn't be Josh pushing beer after beer into Jensen's hand until he passed down on the couch, or Mary Ann to throw a quilt over him once he slept. It felt so surreal, Jensen still couldn't believe it. When Jensen wasn't imagining spotting his brother somewhere, he thought that the house looked like they were just on holiday like those three weeks they had spent in Europe last year, where Jensen had to stop by every three days to water the plants. And the nursery. They had painted the walls a light, mellow green only three months ago, and among the white furniture sat a crib in the middle of the room, the crib that Jensen had helped to build. Jensen could almost see Josh walking in here in the middle of the night, calming the fussing baby, or Marianne singing a lullaby in the evening until it fell asleep. It seemed like it would happen every day. Mac had cried for ten minutes straight that first time they entered the house. Jensen had just shut down a little bit more and blindly started to pack up the furniture and general baby-related stuff from the nursery. They had to drive his truck across town three times, 
until they had collected it all, the cribs, the toys, the milk substitute, the bottles, the mobile hanging from the nursery ceiling. At Jensen's condo, Mackenzie and him emptied the former guest room and used what little of the green paint was left to decorate the walls in hand-drawn flowers and clouds. Jensen supposed that it was part of Mac's coping mechanism because she honest to God hummed to herself at the end of that day. But no, coping wasn't for him. Jensen finished up work at the company. Mackenzie returned to college, more or less straight from the funeral. Take care of yourself and the little one, you hear me? Call me if you need anything. I'll do what I can. And Jensen drove by the hospital on his way home. AJ seemed to recognize him somewhat, at least judging by the way his little arms wrapped around Jensen's hand, and by the way his eyes didn't leave Jensen's for a second throughout being strapped into the car seat. Finally, Jensen sat at home on his couch with the little sleeping human bundle sprawled out on his chest and stared into space. In some part of his still confused mind, Jensen wondered when Josh would stop by to pick AJ up, thanking Jensen for babysitting him. That was the moment when he realized it wasn't going to happen, because just an hour ago, he had seen the coffins of AJ's parents being lowered into the ground and had dropped his obligatory shovelful of grave compost onto each of them. And that was also the moment when Jensen allowed himself to let go. As a whimper wrenched its way out of his trembling lips, he held AJ as close as he dared until the little boy woke up and, feeling Jensen's own discomfort and agony, started to cry from the top of his lungs. For just a second, Jensen was thankful for the reminder that the baby was still there, still his responsibility. But for the next few moments, he watched until the voice for the next few moments, he watched until the boy's face became red like a tomato from screaming and wanted nothing more than to attune to his keening. Instead, Jensen pulled his act together and prepared a bottle for the baby careful to not let any tears that were still streaming down his face drop into the milk formula. He had no idea he, how he was going to make it through this, just that he owed it to AJ to make it. In what little time Jensen had to deal with the idea of having to care for a baby any time soon, not that he ever thought he would have to, there was not a spare second left to read the books on caring for newborns that Mackenzie had brought home from the library the other day. Jensen knew the basics from a 10 minute Google search and he had common sense and so he made it up as he went if he needed to, which was more often than he liked. Still, when AJ had cried his way through the third night since Jensen brought him home and Jensen had barely been able to sleep much less do anything like clean the apartment or go grocery shopping, he almost lost his mind. The sleep deprivation made him impatient and cranky, but AJ didn't care about that. He sure as hell couldn't tell what his problem was either. So Jensen spent the first couple weeks guessing and diaper changing and feeding probably unnecessarily often and falling into despair about it. Every mother he met on the street appeared to have a well-behaved, always sleeping, perfectly calm baby. And the second Jensen put AJ to bed at night, he would begin to scream, no matter how many times Jensen checked that nothing was wrong with his room, his crib, his quilt, or anything in his near proximity. That and Jensen himself looked like shit, but who the hell cared about him? Everything was about the baby these days. His neighbors downstairs only put up with the screaming through the night because whenever he met them in the hallway, Jessie would coo to AJ and he would be a perfect angel about it. Her boyfriend eyed Jensen warily for whatever reason. Jensen couldn't care less. Four weeks after Jensen adopted AJ, and he had worked his way up to four times a week where Jensen wouldn't be able to get any shut-eye, he confessed to Jared Pat... <laughs> Excuse me. Four weeks after Jensen adopted AJ, and he had worked his way up to four times a week where Jensen wouldn't be able to get any shut eye, he confessed to Dr. Padalecki 
AJ's pediatrician just how frayed his nerves truly were. Don't worry, Jensen, the man with the floppy brown hair and the soft hazel eyes said. First of all, it's quite normal for his age. For his age. I checked. He's doing completely fine physically. Nothing that would indicate a reason for his screaming. It usually gets better when he's around three months old. Jensen groaned, buried his face in both hands, and didn't move for a second, not even when he heard the quiet steps of the doctor approaching him. Three months, he had barely made it through the first one. Second, the doctor added, and Jensen felt the warm weight of a big palm settling on his shoulder, squeezing gently. The calmer the parent, the calmer the child. You're doing an amazing job, especially considering what you've been through, and I have no doubt about that. But the child feels when you're unsure or uneasy about it. Try to be more confident. I know you have it in you. And like I said, it'll pass. Jensen finally dropped his hands from his face and looked up, noticing once again that Dr. Pedalecki was one of the few people who managed to be taller than him. He was also stupidly gorgeous and had the most adorable grin in existence. And in another life, like the one Jensen had not two months ago, he would have hit that so hard the doctor would have forgotten his own name. Well, until Jensen noticed the golden wedding band on his left ring finger. Still, that part of his life was deep frozen for now, so Jensen wasn't too heartbroken about his pediatrician's obvious heterosexuality. He could deal. He had bigger things to worry about anyway. So he nodded a bit shyly. Thank you. Hang in there. And with one last squeeze, the doctor let his hand slip from Jensen's shoulder. Thanks, Dr. Padalecki, Jensen said again, moving to put AJ back in his baby carrier. Jared, excuse me. My name's Jared, the doctor offered with an open smile. I don't have any single fathers around here, and on top of that, you're older than me, so it's okay. You're the exception. Okay, then. Jensen nodded and returned his smile stiffly. He worked in silence, and when AJ was all bundled up and ready to leave, he tipped his head at the pediatrician. Jared, he mumbled as a sort of goodbye. Take care, Jensen. I'll see you in two weeks for AJ's shots. When Jensen came home that day, he noticed a moving van out in front of the apartment building. It wasn't a common sight since the majority of people living in this building had been here for years, and they were a small community of only 12 parties on six floors. Only the condo across the hall from Jensen's had recently been unoccupied after good old Mrs. Humphrey had died half a year ago. Why it took so long to get the apartment sold, Jensen had no idea, but knowing her grandchildren, they probably had an inheritance dispute. The moving van was a generic u home with no company markings, and Jensen didn't pay it a second glance before moving his car to the underground garage. With AJ sleeping in his baby carrier, he took the stairs to the first floor and picked up his mail before heading towards the elevator. Blindly, Jensen hit the button and hit the button to call it and waited, mentally still stuck on Dr. Padalecki's, Jared's words. Elevators busted, a voice behind him grunted, effectively throwing Jensen off his train of thoughts. Elevators busted, a voice behind him grunted, effectively throwing Jensen off his train of thought. Jensen whipped his head around just to find a man with dark, unruly hair and piercing blue eyes heaving a bookshelf through the door. Without a second guess, Jensen put AJ down on the floor to hold the door for him, still trying to find the right thing to say. Was this the guy moving in, or just one of his buddies helping out? Because damn, if that was the guy living across the hall from him now, then Jensen had more problems than just a cranky baby to care for. Um, he managed as he watched the man put the piece of furniture on the floor, his simple black t-shirt riding up to reveal delicate hip bones. Well, the guy took a few deep breaths and only looked at Jensen a second time a moment later. Hey, I'm Misha, he introduced himself and held his hand out for Jensen to shake. Jensen, he answered, 
shaking the offered hand and wondering only for a second about the other man's unusual name. It's not like his own was any more common. They shared a quick smile, and Jensen realized how little he actually had smiled during the past month. His lips felt stiff, the movement rusty. Did you get hold of the janitor yet? He'll know what to do with the elevator. Jensen nodded towards the unmoving, sliding doors. Yeah, I did. It's just, I need to get the truck unloaded and back by tonight, and the broken elevator is kind of inconvenient. Misha squinted, then rolled his shoulders before picking up the shelf and heading upstairs. Jensen looked over his shoulder, checking if someone else would come in with more furniture. Don't you have anyone to help you? Misha just huffed a bitter laugh. It's just me. You moving into 4B? Jensen asked, taking AJ and following him. Yes. Ah, Jensen nodded, although Misha wasn't able to see it. Ah? Um, that's the one across the hall from my apartment. Ah, well, howdy, neighbor. Ah, uh, hi, Jensen said, and Misha's light tone actually made him chuckle silently. They didn't say much for the rest of the way, since Misha quickly was too out of breath and Jensen didn't know what to say. By the time Jensen unlocked the door for his condo, though, he had made up his mind. Hey, if you need some help, it's not like I've got much more to do than change diapers for the rest of the day, he offered. That would actually make you the savior of my day, Misha answered, lips spreading into a grin. Only now did Jensen notice how plush and full they were, slightly chapped and yet soft-looking, and he kind of... No, he had no time for this. Well then, I'll gladly save your day. I'll just need a minute taking care of... He broke off when he noticed that AJ was looking at him with his blue eyes wide open watching silently. He had gotten so used to AJ screaming his lungs out at each and every little thing that bugged him that it was a pleasant surprise. Oh, I'm sorry. Misha's voice dropped to a soft, cooing tone as he took a step towards them, his eyes on the baby as Jensen unstrapped him and lifted him into the crook of his arm. I didn't even say hello to the little lady. What's her name? She's a he, actually. They, they thought he'd be a girl, so most of the stuff I have for him is pink. But, uh, his name is AJ. AJ, Misha repeated. Hi there, little man. Then he locked eyes with the little boy in Jensen's arms, who, after a short second, extended a hand, making grabby motions at the stranger. May I, he added. Go ahead, Jensen nodded, too mesmerized by the fact that Misha and AJ shared the same baby blue eye color. A tiny fist closed around Misha's index finger and A.J. blinked a few times up at him before apparently losing interest in focusing back on Jensen. He's adorable. Yours? And yes, Jensen had dreaded the question because it would come up sooner or later. Now, in the next couple decades. Not biologically, but I'm raising him. That was enough to be said about it. The memory's still too fresh for Jensen to deal with them. I'll meet you out here in a minute. Jensen added quickly to prevent further questions. Yeah, sure. AJ chose the exact moment when Jensen put him down on the changing table to break out into another crying fit, but it only spoke for Jensen's nerves that he made quick work of the diver and had him shushed and calmed down within the next few minutes. After AJ was safely tucked in his crib, Jensen switched on the baby monitor and clipped the receiving unit onto his belt. All right, let's do this. He clapped his hands when he saw Misha leaning against the door frame, a soft smile playing around the edges of his lips. That smile said more than Jensen wanted to think about right now, but mostly that Misha already knew there was a story to tell behind all this, and that he would get it out of Jensen one day. By the end of the day, during which AJ had only interrupted Jensen once and was quickly satisfied by a bottle of milk, Jensen's arms were sore and he was more than exhausted. Sleep, depri sleep deprivation aside, 
he hadn't done anything remotely workout related, including sex, for at least a month, and he was rusty. Misha only chuckled when Jensen groaned as they rolled out the futon mattress in what would be his bedroom suit. So I guess I really owe you one, Misha said as an afterthought. Thank you very much. His hair stuck up in messy spikes now because he apparently had an affinity for running his hands through it. One lock was curled onto his forehead, Superman style, and on the back of his head a single strand peeked out. Jensen caught himself at the thought that he'd love to smooth it down just to entangle his fingers in it, preferably during a blowjob or something. Don't worry about it, Jensen waved it off. Let's just drink a beer or something together someday, to new neighbors and stuff. At home, though, I don't really have anyone watching AJ for me. Sure thing, Misha nodded, and the way he said it made Jensen listen more closely. You're not from Texas, are you? Misha shook his head and chuckled. Not exactly. Try Massachusetts, among others. Jensen shot him a slightly irritated glance, but didn't ask further. That sure was a story for another day, too. I see. So what brought you to Dallas? The climate? I don't know. I just thought I'd give Dallas a try. So far, at least the company seemed nice enough. Misha answered with a playful wink at Jensen. It was innocent enough, but it still made Jensen's stomach do a funny twist. It's not like Misha could know they were in Texas, after all. And Jensen didn't exactly go around parading with a rainbow flag as his cape. And anyway, he didn't have time for this. Thanks. Um, I guess I'd better get home and get the little one fed, huh? Jensen tried to sound nonchalant, but apparently failed, judging by the smile dimming on Misha's lips. I'll see you around then, he nodded curtly, then accompanied Jensen to the door. Good night, Jensen. Say good night to AJ, too. Will do. Good night, Misha. And yes, Jensen felt a little better that day, sore arms and legs notwithstanding. That was until AJ's regular evening, evening crying fit started. One of those where he wouldn't let himself get soothed by Jensen. So Jensen found himself sitting on the couch with a screaming, red-faced baby on his chest, wondering if Misha hated him already, since he knew AJ wouldn't stop for at least another hour or two, if Jensen was lucky, which, during the last month, wasn't generally the case. And AJ cried. For the following three nights, to be exact, which had Jensen walking around like a zombie, zombie and even contemplating sleeping through the day as much as he could, which meant he got even less stuff done than usual, but he could only take so much. When AJ woke during the fourth night with a waning, with a wailing keen, Jensen rolled slowly out of bed and dragged his feet over to the nursery. The clock said 4 a.m., and Jensen was seriously pissed. Not at AJ, not at all. At the situation as a whole. At the unfairness of the universe taking away this poor kid's parents at a way too young age, at his own inability to care for AJ the way he wanted to. He did what he could, and he still ended up like this almost every night. No one had prepared him for this. Fuck, but Jensen wanted to punch his hand through the wall with an urgency that surprised him. It wasn't fair, not to him, not to AJ. Why couldn't he just have his life back, the one he gave up with taking in AJ? Why couldn't Josh and Marianne have waited another two minutes before heading downtown on that stupid highway? Why couldn't AJ have a normal fucking life with a mom and a dad? and probably a little sister or brother instead of being raised by his uncle. Jensen knew that these thoughts weren't fair either, and that his life was the way it was, and he had to fucking deal with it. Still, he couldn't help thinking, and he refused to feel guilty for it. How often had he moaned about having to go to work and getting up early? How often had he damned life itself when he nursed a hangover on his couch, although he knew it was his own damn fault. 
How often had he felt lonely because his last relationship... Well, no, he didn't go there on principle. It all seemed so meager in the harsh light of the kitchen lamp, with the crying baby sobbing on his shoulder. It was a miracle in itself that Jensen hadn't gotten any complaints from his cohabitants, most of all Misha, so far. They surely heard AJ's harsh cries and still no one commented on it. He had seen Misha only twice since he moved in. Mostly the sounds of him furnishing his apartment were the only thing Jensen noticed about him. The clank of tools, the scratch of something being pushed aside on the wooden floors, the cluttering of items being rummaged in and moved into cupboards and shelves. A metallic crash that one time that had AJ wake up and whining for an hour. Jensen tested the temperature of the formula on his wrist and nodded to himself. Just about right. Not even the bottle of milk could effectively calm the boy down. He sobbed and choked his way through drinking hungrily at the bottle, and Jensen's heart clenched once again. Not fair, all of it. He shouldn't have to go through this. The anger welled up again, and Jensen let it go. Anger towards his brother for not driving a different route, for his wife always being the punctual one. Anger towards the drunk driver and the stupid situation. They could all go fuck themselves. Jensen let it smolder and burn in his chest, wallowing in a rage and anger and his own lack of power. The feelings consuming him were better to handle than the bottomless pit that was his heart during the past couple weeks. It made him feel alive, made him feel like there was something worth living and fighting for, namely AJ. The baby started to wail yet again after having finished his bottle. Jensen sighed and mentally prepared himself for another two hours of having to listen to his screams. He couldn't stop it. He couldn't soothe the boy. All he could do was hold him in his arms and wait for the fit to be over. He didn't have the heart to put AJ down. His cries were too gut-wrenching for that. He had no idea how long he'd been walking around the apartment, rocking AJ in his arms when someone rang the doorbell. Great. Now the long-awaited complaint eventually trickled in. When Jensen opened the door, it was to a sleepily blinking Misha in wide boxers and an old threadbare t-shirt. May I come in? He mumbled around a yawn. Jensen quickly waved him inside so that the boy wouldn't wake up the whole house by crying loudly in the hallway. Let me guess, baby colic? What now? Jensen asked, his voice hoarse from not having talked in hours. Baby colic, didn't your pediatrician tell you? Jensen huffed, barely able to keep his own eyes open told me a damn lot of things, dude. Not like I'm an expert. Misha eyed him warily, then opened his arms toward AJ. Let me hold him? And yeah, Jensen was kind of desperate at this point. So Misha might be a stranger, but Jensen knew where he lived, and he was in his own apartment, so he wouldn't get away with shit. All of this flashed through Jensen's mind in a split second, while he already held the wailing baby for Misha to take. It wasn't like Misha had the golden touch or something either, which felt kind of reassuring. No, AJ cried for another half hour, but Misha rested him on the couch, softly cooed to the baby with patience. Jason Jensen had lost a week into this and alternated soothing strokes with belly rubs. When the subs started to get quieter, he asked Jensen for a triangular scarf, and Jensen handed him the one he usually used to carry AJ around in. He tucked AJ firmly into the cloth. By the time Misha was finished, AJ's little eyes had already fallen closed. Jensen washed it all, fascinated by the work of Misha's slim, dexterous fingers, and too sleepy and exhausted to think about what else these fingers could probably do. He just smiled, relieved, when AJ finally rested in his crib, sound asleep. Thank you, he sighed, deeply grateful eyes finding Misha's behind him in the doorway. Misha only nodded. I might not have a job at the moment, but I do value my sleep. Also, you shouldn't do what I did just now too often. It restricts his movement, but sometimes it helps calm the baby down. Thanks again, Jensen said groggily, so happy that this worked, that he seriously contemplated kissing Misha right then and there. Kind of an overreaction, but probably worth it. Misha gave him one last tired smile before he bid him good night and vanished back into his own apartment. 
surprisingly enough, AJ slept until 9 a.m. the next morning, and Jensen had the longest period of uninterrupted sleep in the last month and a half. When he met Misha on his way to get the mail, covered in sweat from his morning run, Jensen didn't think twice before asking, Want to go for a cup of coffee later?